how do you get your signature onto your photo in Luminar Neo? Or how do you get your logo as a watermark on your photo? It's a question I get asked heaps and it's really easy to do. Let me show you how in this video. Whether you're lucky enough to have your logo exist with transparency and you wanna put that on as a watermark, or if you don't even have a signature yet, but that's what you wanna use, I have a method for both cases. Let's kick things off with a logo with transparency. Let's suppose we want to add our watermarked logo over the top of this photo here. It's really easy to do. All we need to do is come into the edit section and we're going to use layers to drop our logo over the top. So we click the plus icon in the layer section and then just navigate to our logo that exists with transparency. We double click it and we don't see anything happen yet. That's because it's just loaded into the layers palette over here. We currently don't see anything because it exists as a white image that also includes transparency. So it is white on white. But as I click on it, we see my good old Snap Photography logo loaded with 50% opacity, which is the default opacity in Luminar Neo. And then we can either reduce that if we want a more subtle effect, or we can be really obnoxious and push it all the way to 100. But you might wanna go slightly more subtle, something like that. And then we can use the handles at the corner to click and grab, and then we can resize that. So depending how big you want that logo and where you want to position it. So for example, you could just put a little watermark in the corner, or you could put it right over the top if you were concerned about people stealing your photo. And once it's in place where you want it, you just close the layer properties dialog box, right click, and then you would export your photo as per normal. And if your intention is to put it online, you wanna make sure it's saved as a JPEG. So that's a super easy way to watermark your photo with your logo. Now, if you don't have a logo yet and you like the idea of actually getting something to represent your brand, I'll put a couple of links in the description below that I found really helpful. One is a really great tool that you can use to create a custom logo. And the other is a link for a designer to create a really professional logo for you at a really affordable price. Now, let's say you want to create a signature. Whenever I sell my landscape prints, they always come with my signature in the bottom corner. I just feel like it adds personal and value to that finished print. Now, if that's something you want to do in Luminar Neo, it's really easy to do. The first thing you'll need is a piece of paper and a marker. Then just write your signature. I find a nice fat black marker works best for this. And don't worry if you want to end up with a white signature, I'm going to show you how to do that. I'd recommend you have a few goes just to make sure that you're happy with the signature. And then you can either scan this or alternatively, just grab your phone and then you're going to frame your signature up and you want to make sure that the edges of the paper are nice and parallel, and that's gonna make sure that there's no distortion on the perspective. And once you've got it framed up the way you want it, just take a photo. Okay, so now I've got my photo of my signature. I just need to get that into Luminar Neo. I'm going old school and using a USB cable. That's now available to me in the folder I've put it in, in Luminar Neo. So now we need to process that signature. We only need to do it once and we can then use it on any photo we want. Let me show you how to do that. So let's open up the signature and hopefully you won't have to edit what I'm having to here, which is my little test go. But I'm just gonna quickly clone that out just by sampling a little bit of paper there. Paint over that, all good. And now we can carry on with the edit. What I'd like to do is jump into the develop section here because I want to push what is currently an off-white to pure white and what is kind of black all the way to black. Now you might think you do that by grabbing the white slider and moving that up and the black slider and bring that down. It helps, but it doesn't really get us where we want to be. The best way to do it is to open the curves and the top right corner, which represents the white point. We want to grab that and we want to bring that over until we get rid of any off-white coloring. And the best way to check that is to press J on your keyboard, and that's gonna show you when you're hitting pure white. So as soon as I see red everywhere, that tells me I've now hit pure white. Perfect. Now that's starting to bleach out the signature as well. We wanna bring that back to pure black. And we do that by grabbing the bottom corner, which represents black, and now we're just gonna move it over to the right until we start to see those little blue pixels, which are telling us we've hit pure black until we see all of those. Perfect, now we can press the J key again, and now we have a black on white signature, but no transparency. So how do we put that over the top of our photos and potentially turn that black signature into a white signature? Let's do that now. We wanna save this photo, so I'm gonna export this and I'm just gonna save it as a JPEG. Doesn't really matter, you could do a PNG, a TIFF, but JPEG's fine in this case, 100% quality. 
I'll save it in the signature and watermarks folder, click export, and now that's gonna be available to me, that edited version here. Just so there's no confusion, I am just going to move that other version to the trash. So we only have the flattened JPEG to concern ourselves with. Now, let's see about how we can apply this over the top of something. I'm gonna come over to my landscapes folder and open up another photo here. And now if we come to the edit section, we're gonna do the same as we did before, which was add a new layer. And this time we're gonna find our signature. We're gonna click on that once. And now you can see it's done exactly what it did before, which was drop that layer in with a 50% opacity. We have the ability to rescale it. So we could move that over to the corner if we want. Usually I like to make my signature nice and small, something like that. But just so we can see what's going on, I'm gonna leave it nice and big at the moment. I'm gonna crank the opacity all the way to 100. And you watch what happens when I change my blending mode and I come down to multiply. All of a sudden it's made those white pixels invisible. So now all I have is a pure black signature. And then we can position that where we want. But I prefer to have a white signature, not a black one. So what do we need to do? Well, so you can see what's going on. I'm just gonna change it back to the normal mode here. We're gonna come down to the develop section and again, we're gonna work with curves because that's gonna give us the ability to invert the white and the black, just flip them around. So basically, when we grab the black point, which is down here, and we start lifting that up, you can see that the black pixels start getting lighter. So they're going towards gray, gray, gray. As I push it higher, they've just bleached out to pure white. Now it's white on white with no detail. But what if we grab the white slider over here and start bringing that down? Well, that's gonna darken those white pixels. And as I bring that all the way down, we now have a white signature on a black background, which is exactly what we want. Now watch what happens again when I change the blend mode. You saw last time we went to multiply. So if we did that this time, we'd end up with a black surround and a see-through signature. That is not what we want. So this time, rather than multiply, what we wanna do is come down to the screen mode. So now we're just seeing the white pixels only and not the black ones. And now we have the ability to add our signature to our photos. Of course, if you don't want 100% intensity, what you can do is reduce the opacity slightly so that you still see the signature, but with a lesser intensity. If you've got a black on white logo, we can use that same technique. So for example, if I load up my AT logo here, we can do exactly the same thing with that. I can crank the opacity to 100, change the blend mode to either multiply or screen. If I want to go white on black, all I'd need to do again is jump into the develop tool here and with the curves, just grab one slider, move it down, the other one, move it up. So for all intents and purposes, we now have a logo or a signature on a transparent background, which is perfect for adding our watermark to our photos in Luminar Neo. I hope this has been helpful to you guys. If it has, please leave me a like and a comment in the description below. And if you looked at my landscape photos and thought, they're kind of cool. I'd like to learn how to edit a photo like that. Why don't you check out that video right there where I walk through a complete landscape photo edit and share my full workflow in Luminar Neo. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye-bye for now. Hi, guys. <laughs> Come on. What I want you to do is just film over the top. Film that like that, okay?